Hey, what's up, everybody? Um, my name is Tyler Case, and this is Kristen Case, and we're uh, associate teachers uh, for the young adult class um, at White Oak Worship Center, and we are going to be uh, leading a lesson in the Gospel in Galatians today. And we just want to thank you for joining us today online. Hey guys, uh, we miss y'all and we hope and pray that everybody's doing okay and staying safe and healthy. Um, and we hope everybody had an awesome Mother's Day last weekend. Um, we're going to go ahead and start and we're going we're gonna to open in prayer. Thank you, Lord, for this, this beautiful day. Thank you in advance for what you have planned for us, Lord. We come to you this morning. Um, with a humble heart and ready to receive your word, Lord. We just pray that you imprint your word on our hearts. And uh, we thank you for the good health and strength that we have and all the many blessings that you've given us. We pray, Father, for all those that are watching, that you would meet their needs, whatever they may be, whether physical or financial or spiritual, Lord. We know that you can uh, and you will help us if we ask you. And that's what we're doing, and we're believing that you will come through and provide what we need. You are our great provider, Lord. And thank you for all that you're doing and all that you're going to do. Lord, I just pray that you have your hand on this lesson, and it really speaks to somebody specifically that's watching, Lord. Thank you for everything that you do. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> so, as, um, today we are studying the Gospel in Galatians. And we're going to be specifically focusing on the instructions that Paul gives us in, um, in Galatians chapter 6 uh, for Christian living. If you want to open up your Bible and um, follow along with us, I know it's kind of a change of, change of things. It's not exactly um, it's not exactly you know a group thing, but we hope that you can follow along and um, and you get something out of this for sure. Um, <clears throat> so we'll, I'll begin reading um, Galatians chapter six, verses one through eighteen, and then we're going to come back, come back through, and kind of split it up and, and delve a little deeper into each little specific uh, set of verses. So I'll start out verse one, um, brothers. If someone is caught in a sin, you who are spiritual should restore him gently. But watch yourself, or you may also be tempted. Carry each other's burdens, and in this way you fulfill the law of Christ. If anyone thinks he is something when he's nothing, he deceives himself. Each one should test his own actions. Then he can take pride in himself without comparing himself to somebody else. For each one should carry his own load. Anyone who receives instruction in the word must share all good things with his instructor. Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows, and the one who sows to please his sinful nature, from that nature will reap destruction. The one who sows to please the Spirit, from the Spirit will reap eternal life. Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. <clears throat> See what large letters I use as I write to you with my own hand. This is Paul writing to the Galatians, uh, the Galatian church. Those who want to make a good impression outwardly are, to, are trying to compel you to be circumcised. The only reason they do this is to avoid being persecuted for the cross of Christ. Not even those who are circumcised obey the law. Yet they want you to be circumcised, that they may boast about your flesh. May I never boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, through which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. <clears throat> Neither circumcision nor uncircumcision means anything. What counts is a new creation. Peace and mercy to all who follow this rule, even to the Israel of God. Finally, let no one cause me trouble, for I bear on my body the marks of Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit, brothers. Amen. 
And so our key verse today is going to be uh, Galatians chapter 6, verse 9. Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. So um, to start off with, um, what does it mean to do good as a Christian? I know a lot of times to do good, you know, more in the secular realm, people do good a lot of times to to bring glory or clout to themselves. But I think the the biggest thing that sets apart Christians from you know, non Christians in doing good is we do it to glorify uh, Jesus. We we do it to bring Jesus you know, up in conversation and, and really to direct the world to Jesus rather than ourselves. Um, and this is why we know about great philanthropists like Bill Gates and Warren Buffett who supposedly give half of their fortunes to charity. Um, as Christians, we do good in order to draw attention to Jesus Christ. <clears throat> and so as we go through uh, Galatians 6, Paul gives some really practical advice on how to do good to all and to bring attention to Jesus. And there's a, uh, a little commentary I'll read here, Unrealized Blessings. Charles Spurgeon and his wife, according to a story in the Chapel magazine, would sell, but they refused to give away the eggs that their chickens laid. Even close relatives were told, you may have them only if you pay for them. As a result, some people labeled the Spurgeons as greedy and grasping. But they accepted the criticisms criticisms without defending themselves, and only after Mrs. Spurgeon died was the full story revealed. All of the profits that were uh, made from the sale of eggs went to support two elderly wid widows, and because the Spurgeons were unwilling to let their left hand know what the right hand was doing, um, and that's a reference to Matthew um, chapter 6, verse 3, they endured the attacks in silence. So, that's just kind of an example of, you know, they were concealing what they were doing to keep from bringing glory um, to themselves. Right. Yeah. Bringing the the reward to themselves or or the clout. Um, they wanted to. They would rather keep it concealed. The whole reason that they were doing, you know, that, that they were. Um, that they were selling the eggs rather than giving them away, um, because they they cared more for these two elderly uh, widows than to have any glory themselves. And I think that's something that we, we as Christians could you know, really strive to do. So, <clears throat> um, a couple of points. Um, Point number one is, is about burden bearing, and um, so how should we respond when our brothers and sisters have problems? And then I'll have Kristen um, read just Galatians six verses one through six. Please. So I'm reading from the NLT version, and it says, Dear brothers and sisters, if another believer is overcome by some sin, you who are godly should gently and humbly help that person back onto the right path. And be careful not to fall into the same temptation yourself. Um, share each other's burdens, and in this way, obey the law of Christ. If you think you are too important to help someone, you are only fooling yourself. You are not that important. Pay careful attention to your own work, for then you will get the satisfaction of a job well done, and you won't need to compare yourself to anyone else, for we are each responsible for our own conduct. Those who are taught the word of God should provide for their teachers, sharing all good things with them. <clears throat> right. So the passage kind of shows that, that the Christian response should be one out of love. Um and that we we got to be careful when we when people that we love begin to fall into sinful habits. Um, we're also called to help support them as much as we can. Um, but sometimes the, the difficult truth is that you know 
those people also have to want to be helped um, to benefit from that kind of support. And my Bible um, provides a little commentary on this, uh, these specific verses, and I thought it was interesting and, and worth note. Um, no, no Christian should ever think that he or she is totally independent and doesn't need help from others, and no one should feel excused from the task of helping others. The body of Christ, the church, functions only when the members work together for the common good. So I think that's something that really, um, doing that really shows, shows, shows the, the unity of the body of Christ. Um, and so then in, in verse 4, um, my Bible says, each one should test his own actions. Um, and this is from the NIV. Um, each one should test his own actions. Then he can take pride in himself without comparing himself to somebody else. Um, and so what, what does it mean to test your own actions? You have any thoughts on that? We, um, we should be thoughtful about our actions for sure. Um, and we should be aware of our motives for doing good. And we've got to always ask ourselves, like, why do we do the things that we do? And just consider who we are and how we act. Um, and while we make the decisions um, that we make, and you just have to be, be prepared to be honest with yourself. Um, and another little commentary for verse 4 in um in my Bible says, when you do your very best, you feel good about the results, and there's no need to compare yourself with others. People make comparisons for many reasons, and some point out others' flaws in order to feel better about themselves. Others simply want reassurance that they're doing well. When you're tempted to compare, look at Jesus Christ. His example will inspire you to do your very best, and His loving acceptance will comfort you when you fall short of your expectations. So that's I mean, you can always lean on Jesus and look at Jesus for inspiration on how to handle things. He went through so, so much um, with, with the crucifixion and the persecution. And just, he wasn't, he wasn't, uh, he wasn't being what people thought that he should be. You know, he was there for, for the purpose that he knew. He was there to, to save um, humanity, give, give us all a, a second chance. But it wasn't the way that, that the people around him thought that it should be. You know? um, <clears throat> so um, you've always got to be kind of thinking about um, why you're doing something, how you're doing something and, and make sure that you're falling in line with what the word says and it's especially important to know the word because if you don't know the word and you find yourself out in, in a situation I mean, you're either going to do what the bible says or you're going to live by the flesh and you've got to the glorification of, of the flesh is sin and if you're not glorifying Jesus, you know, you really need to, especially as a profession, Chris, professing Christian, you should um, kind of consider if you have everything straight. So um, so the next point here, did you have anything to add? Yeah, so um, whenever you are doing something good, just think about it. Are you... Are you genuinely doing good to help others um, to glorify Christ? Or are you doing good so that someone else might see you do good so you can get that recognition? Um, now, it's still good if you do it, but that is your reward right there. You've already gotten it. Um, just that, that one person or whoever sees you doing that good. Um, or the, the person that you make sure that they see you um, doing good. That's all you get. 
Um, so just keep that in mind. Um, try and whenever you are helping someone out, you don't have to boast about it. Um, just try and be genuine about it and just know in your heart that you're you're doing this good thing, but it's it's bigger than just you. It's, yeah. it's not about you. The reward in heaven is going to be much greater than what, you know, acceptance that you get or whatever on, on earth. So mm -hmm. just something to look forward to for sure. Um, so point number two um, is persevering and doing good. And Paul kind of outlines this. Um Person, you want to read verses 7 through 10, please? It says, Don't be misled. You cannot mock the justice of God. You will always harvest what you plant. Those who live only to satisfy their own sinful nature will harvest decay and death from that sinful nature. But those who live to please the Spirit will harvest everlasting life from the Spirit. So let's not get tired of doing what is good. At just the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessing if we don't give up. Therefore, whenever we have the opportunity, we should do good to everyone, especially to those in the family of faith. Yeah, that kind of ties in with what you just said. <clears throat> um, but how can we sometimes grow weary in doing good? And why is doing good such a tiring experience? Um, I think that when you do good and and you don't necessarily see um, praise or reward for it right at the at that um, very second you know the, the instant gratification over time and over time you can kind of get worn down um, if you're not looking toward that that heavenly reward and, and knowing that you're doing something bigger than just helping an old lady across the road or somebody carry their groceries or whatever the deal is. Um, you know, if, you, if you're if you not looking for it and, and looking, looking into the future and um, knowing the reward that's coming later on, uh, it, can, it can definitely be kind of tiring because you're using your own time and effort, you know, but that's kind of a fleshly way to look at it. Um, you don't know what the help that you're doing or the good that you're doing is doing to cultivate someone else's life. You know, so the things that you do are definitely definitely worth it. Um, and do you have anything to add there? Yeah, um, everyone has their own life, their own things that they're doing and everything that's going on in their own lives but um, it's still our duty to bear one another's burdens and to help each other out uh, whenever we can um, and the whole like I said the whole point is to glorify Christ and make sure that he is lifted up um, so helping someone else out even when you've got your own stuff going on um, it's tough but it's worth it exactly yeah. Um, and Galatians chapter 5 actually discusses the battle that we are constantly faced versus, of the, the spirit versus flesh. Um, <clears throat> and the battle is continually with us and, and doing good and overcoming that battle um, is, a, is definitely a tiring, weary experience. But you can always look forward. If, if you have the mindset, you can always look forward to that reward that you're, you're going to be presented in heaven and then be able to you know, lay a crown at Jesus' feet. Um, so, uh, let's see. So, how do these, these verses, 7 through 10, um, encourage us to continue doing good even when we're weary? Well, um, um, it says pretty clearly there that um, in verse 7, a man reaps what he sows. So, if you sow good, into someone else or into any area in your life in hopes that you know God is being glorified through it you're going to reap that harvest you know? and but if, if you it says here if you 
sow to please your sinful nature, from that nature you will reap destruction. And also the one who sows to please the Spirit, from the Spirit will reap an eternal life. Um, so let us not become weary in doing good. For at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. So again, you're just looking into the future and anticipating that um, that reward, that harvest that you're going to reap. Um, <clears throat> if we sow um, godly kind, kindness, we will, by the promise of God and His Word, reap a harvest for that kindness at the proper time. And this hope can help us uh, to not grow weary in well-doing. And so there are you know, some practical examples of when Christians can help support one another and build a community of love, especially currently with the situation that's going on with the COVID pandemic and um, being quarantined and people being lonely and um, having to deal with things um, on their own. Um, the church you know, sends letters and little postcards. Um, I know we've gotten a postcard or two from Miles and Aaron, and we super appreciate it. It really lifts our spirits on Mother's Day cards. Um, keeping in touch and checking in with fellow you know, believers, that, with our family at church, you know, just giving, giving a call every once in a while and checking in, it really means a whole lot. Um, and doing what we can to, to stay personally connected. That, you know, it really rings true currently with the, the situation that we're dealing with, um, that we're believing that you know, it resolves quickly. I actually just got some really good news that tentatively we're supposed to have a live service on May um, 31st, I believe it is. So looking forward to that for sure. It's going to be awesome to get back together. Um, <clears throat> so our next point here is, is glory in the cross. Um, and so those verses to read are um, chapter 6, verses 11 through 18. Read that. And it says, uh, this is Paul's final advice. It says, notice what large letters I use as I write these closing words in my own handwriting. Those who are trying to force you to be circumcised want to look good to others. They don't want to be persecuted for teaching that the cross of Christ alone can save. And even those who advocate, advocate circumcision don't keep the whole law themselves. They only want you to be circumcised so they can boast about it and claim you as their disciples. <clears throat> for as me... May I never boast about anything except the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because of that cross, my interest in this world has been crucified, and the world's interest in me has also died. Um, it doesn't matter whether we have been circumcised or not. What counts is whether we have been transformed into a new creation. May God's peace and mercy be upon all who live by this principle. They are the new people of God. From now on, don't let anyone trouble me with these things, for I bear on my body the scars that show I belong to Jesus. Dear brothers and sisters, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Amen. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, so in this set of verses that <clears throat> Paul was um, telling the, the church that... Um, you know, there were some some people that were trying to convince them that they, they've got to be circumcised to serve Christ, but that just simply wasn't the case. Um, Christ fulfilled the law. You know, it wasn't a, a requirement after that. Um, but uh, that was kind of carryover from the law, and it was a common problem in the young Christian church. Um, as many were trying to be, bring the law into new practice of Christianity amongst the Gentiles, but really that it was kind of defeating the point. I mean, Christ died to bypass that law. I mean, we, we couldn't do it, so God sent his son to do it for us. Um, but then later on, um, you know, people were trying to get back into that old groove of uh, making the law their idol, pretty much, or following the law and thinking that they were um, 
they were saved from it. So we know that that's not true. And um, that's still the case uh, today. Some people um, look at these laws or um, our Ten Commandments and and say if you, if you do these things, if you do these things physically, um, then you're saved. Or um, if you follow these particular rules, then you're saved. And that's that's just not true. Um, you really you can't do any certain thing and be saved. You have to truly um, have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Um, if that relationship isn't there, then then you're just following a bunch of rules. That's right. That's right. So <clears throat> why does Paul say that some were trying to push this old law? Well, what verse was that? Right here. It says that um, those who are trying to force you to be circumcised want to look good to others. They don't want to be persecuted for teaching that the cross of Christ alone can save. Um, and so basically they were just trying to avoid being persecuted themselves um, because the things were so strict, you know, and they were really getting back into following the law that it, it became such a big deal that, that you know, these people didn't want to become persecuted themselves. Um, so they just kind of went along with the crowd pretty much um, and, and were trying to push the old law. Um, of circumcision, but really, as we discussed before, it didn't, you know, whether you're circumcised or not, it didn't matter. Um, and so, what types of compromises do you see Christians make today to avoid persecution? I would say, kind of similarly, going along um, with the crowd, not standing up for someone that's being mocked, uh, to keep yourself from, from being the mocked one, or... Um, even just little things like peer pressure um, in social situations, um, you, you really find yourself making compromises and telling yourself that you know it's just you know it's just this or it's just that, um, but really it, it takes more of a toll than you think. So, um, and then according to verse 15, what is the only thing that counts? So in verse 15, it's talking about um, how it doesn't really matter whether or not they were circumcised. Um, what truly, truly matters is the transformation um, into a new creation. Um, so that, that true, real change from the inside out is what counts. Yeah, the only thing that matters to God is being changed from the inside out. It's easy to be so concerned with the outside view, but... The new creature formed inside through being born again is all that ultimately counts. So, um, the focal point of these verses, um, being the new creation, we're, we're given a new life in Christ, and we have many choices to make, and we work together and support one another, cultivating the fruit of the Spirit, and it's the work of Jesus on the cross that gives us this new life, so... <clears throat> that, you know, the outward appearance, the the laws that were being, you know, strictly followed before the new covenant with, with Jesus, um, those things all fell away when, when Jesus completed um, what he did on the cross, you know, being crucified and dying for our sins. Um, there was no man on earth that could follow all the laws um, and so really it took it took God to make this right so um, so <clears throat> in our Christian life how, how do we avoid distractions and continually focus on what matters most in the Christian walk I would say um, pray every day um, pray without ceasing the Bible says you you have to maintain that connection with God. Um, pray every day, even if you don't feel like it, even if things are not going your way, even if you if it seems like you are just so busy and you don't have time for it, just 
stop and take a breath for a minute and just get that, send that little prayer up. It really, um, it really sets my, my mind back on track. You know, <clears throat> if you pray to God, you're praying, you're, you're basically saying, I'm not depending on myself. And it just reminds you that, that God's got your back. Mm-hmm. You know? um, other things you can do to avoid distractions um, and stay on track is um, hanging out with other Christians, um, having a strong Christian uh, man or woman as a mentor that you can look up to and ask them questions. They can help guide you um, in your walk with the Lord. <clears throat> It's very important to have those personal relationships. You know that you can, you know, you can have accountability partners. You can have people that you go to for, you know, answering questions. Like you said, it's really important to have that fellowship with another believer or another group of believers. Um, just really reinforces what we believe. Um, God is our helper and provider and shoulder to lean on and whatever we need him to be. And you definitely want to look up to him. But it's, um, I mean, he He wants us to be there for our brothers and sisters. So that it's very important to stay connected with one another. Yep, for sure. Um, so I think we're going to conclude. There's another little excerpt here. Uh, it's called Let Us Do Good, um, and it's by Alexander McLaurin. It's a little lengthy, lengthy so there's some with me. Um, Let us do good to all men. It was Christianity that invented the word humanity, either in its meaning of the aggregate of men or its meaning of a gracious attitude towards them. And it invented the word because it revealed the thing on which it rests, brotherhood, is the sequel of fatherhood, and the conception of mankind beneath all diversities of race and culture and the like, as being an organic whole knit together by a thousand mystical bands, and each atom of which has connection with and obligations to every other. That is a product of Christianity. However it may have been in subsequent ages divorced from the recognition of its source, so then the gospel rises above all the narrow distinctions which call themselves patriotism and are parochial, and it says that there is neither circumcision nor uncircumcision, Jew nor Greek, barbarian, Scythian, born nor free, but all are one. Get high enough up on, upon the hill, and the hedges between the fields are barely perceptible. Live on the elevation to which the gospel of Jesus Christ lifts men, and you look down upon a great prairie without a fence or a ditch or a division. So my text comes with profound significance. Let us do good to all, because all are included in the sweep of that great purpose of love and in the redeeming possibilities of that great death on the cross. Christ has swept up the compass, if I may say so, of his love and work all around humanity. And are we to extend our sympathies for our efforts less widely? The circle includes the world. Our sympathies should be as wide as the circle that Christ has drawn. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty powerful. Something to ponder, for sure. So I think that'll end us up. I really want to encourage you to... Get logged on and, and watch the live streaming service um, at whiteoakworship.org. Um, and other than that, we're going to close in prayer. And uh, we hope to see you very soon. And we love you. Thank you, Father, for all that you do. And we believe and we receive this word that you put in front of us, Lord. And we thank you. And we pray that you're with us. Um, until we can all come back together again, we, we know that your hand is with us uh, and upon us. And we know that um, through everything, God, you're going to be glorified. And we can uh, rest assured upon that. Thank you, Father, for all that you provide, all the blessings that you've given us. 
and we look forward to what you have to come. And thank you for everything in the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. Thanks for tuning in.